Unfortunately, a lot of people have talked to us and, and given us stories of how they've faced real hate crime, whether it's as little as being shouted at at the station, having weird looks, or something much more serious, such mm -hmm. as being uh, actually abused on the street, um, being, uh, uh, or, or even mosques being graffiti being put on them. And this is seriously dangerous for our society. But I would like to say, as a whole, we do have, you know, across Europe, the rise of the far right in a, in a much more dangerous way mm. and what we need to do here i think is recognize that we have done much better i think overall mm. uh, but there are, we should not be complacent about the real challenges that are being faced and mick i mean what is this down to because is it a rise because of things like you know the referendum vote people are suddenly feeling that they've got more of a voice is it that people are uh, uh, in increased numbers just um, have f facing this resentment that they want to speak out or is it because more people are reporting what they're facing and being listened to? From what we see, it looks like more people... It's a mixture of all of these things together. It's very difficult to distinguish between each of these different things separately, but people do definitely feel a significant um, hatred a greater amount of hatred than they did before. Uh, if you look at the figures, um, even the polling that's been done on this issue, some of these viewpoints on Muslim communities in particular have been there for a while. Um, you know, 30% of young children between the ages of 10 and 14 think there are too many Muslims in the UK, and that was a, a poll a couple of years ago. So the question of whether something like this and Brexit vote may have validated some of these opinions that people held before and basically empowered them to be able to do something that they weren't able to do before. That's the challenge we face and we need to find a way that, you know, racism is not allowed in our society and it's not tolerated in any shape or form. May May I, oh, I was going to say, sorry. What, what is the answer to what we do here? Because the difficulty is, as, you know, the person we heard there is saying, absolutely shocking things that are said, but you can't just sweep that under the carpet. If you say to people, no, you can't think like that, no, you can't say it they still feel that way so how do we tackle what they're actually feeling and their attitudes to be able to change this well I think there's no doubt that um, the vast majority of people who voted leave did so because they thought it was the right thing for the country um, but it is no doubt in my mind that it has emboldened a tiny minority of people and given them permission to say things that would have been unthinkable a year ago and taking us back to the 1950s and I think it's incumbent on all of us to stand up to racism and prejudice wherever we find it and wherever we see it the the increase in hate crime is across all groups, so lesbians, um, LGBT, disabled women. We've seen the terrible um, death threats and rape threats made against Gina Miller. We've seen Diane Abbott writing in today's Guardian about the abuse that she has suffered online. And let's not forget, we've had a Polish man murdered in Essex. We had our colleague Joe Cox, mm. um, MP, murdered during the referendum campaign. And as Mick Dad says, the rise of the far right is, is not a UK phenomenon. It's happening across Europe and in the United States as well. How much responsibility? No one's going to ever justify hate crime. No one's going to justify hate, actually, at all. It's, it's never healthy for any society, is it? But how much responsibility do you think politicians have to take for not recognising a lot of very strong feeling in the UK and across Europe, a feeling of, of, of rightly or wrongly that their wages have been affected, that their lifestyles have been affected by free movement uh, of people, not taking that on board and sometimes saying you're just being racist, that in a way that has led to kind of a fueling of anger because I sense that around the Brexit campaign there were a lot of accusations of racism there are people saying I'm not racist I just want to be able to have a job and there's and it's almost allowed groups to fuel that hate I mean politicians perhaps need to address those issues as well well there's figures out today showing that the number of people living in poverty in the UK is set to be 19 million by the end of 2020 and that's it's gone up from 15 million in 2008 most of that is a result of the crash that happened in mm. 2008 that's There's, the reason, but we should but say, voted, I'm not talking about the reason because it, it, it's probably wrong, but it's what people feel is yeah, well, the people, fault. That's people, why Brexit people won are, for a lot of people, didn't people it? People haven't had a pay rise if they work mm. in the public sector for the last eight years. And I don't think, I think politicians perhaps um, underestimated the effect that that had on people. The fact that our public services are under pressure from the government as never before. The fact that the NHS is under pressure. People can't get an appointment at their GP surgery. They can't get a place for their child at school. 
And that has been, mm. you know, immigration has become the proxy mm. for a failure to fund public services and a failure to give people a pay rise. Mm. But um, politicians also have a responsibility not to inflame the rhetoric. And the rhetoric that we see from UK's immigration, the UKIP's immigration chief, John Bickley, talking about if you want a jihadi for a neighbour, vote mm. Labour in, in the Stoke on Trent by election. This is disgusting mm. and it's taking us back 50 years. We cannot allow this type of political rhetoric to be normalised by politicians and then to poison the bloodstream of our, our politics mm. in this country. It's not patriotic and it's not what Britain's about. And Mick, just a quick word from you. Do you worry as the Brexit process unfolds that we could see more of this? Very much so. This is something that many people are worried about across the country, not just the way that individuals react, but the way that certain parts of the media have been fueling this as well, the, the, and certain politicians from the far right, and, as well as places like UKIP, UKIP as well. We need to ensure that this is not tolerated and we have leadership from our politicians and our senior politicians to stand up and say, whilst I, I recognise your views on immigration, hate is unacceptable, mm. we're not going to tolerate it, it's not acceptable in our society.